guys, Cyrus here, and today I'm going to be running you guys through basic infantry controls in Armour 3 when you're using AI. So, a lot of people complain that AI are retarded, that they don't that do what they want, that they, they never move, that they get stuck, all sorts of complaints. Um, I'm here to kind of dispel that myth a bit, uh, but also agree with that myth. Um, Armour 3's AI aren't that dumb. They just have a very specific way that they're meant to be used and a lot of people try to get them to do other things than that. So, uh, the first thing that you should be doing is making sure that your AI, when you're not uh, trying to hold a position, are uh, regrouped with you. So to do that you can select the AI and select the regroup button. But first, let's talk about selecting AI because you might not know how to do that. So, to select a particular unit, what you can do is you can press the corresponding F key, so F2, F3, F4 to select each unit and you can press it again to deselect them. And you'll see down in the bottom left there the ones with green on them are the ones that I have selected. Uh, so, another way that you can select a unit, so say I don't know which number that guy is over there, I just want to know, I just want to select him. What I can do is I can press the F1 key, I can select him with the middle mouse button by mousing over him. And that'll get him selected specifically. So at the moment you can see my guys are all standing out in the middle of nowhere just doing whatever. That's because I've given them a move command. So what you can do to get them all to form up with you is you can select them all with the tilde key and then scroll down to regroup and middle fall mouse back. click. Understood. And then you'll tell them to fall back and they'll all run to your position and get into the default formation which is a wedge. Uh, this formation is a loose formation so they'll drop out of it if you end up hitting contact which is uh, another thing that people complain about. I'm going to talk about formations in a separate video and how you can avoid them just running off to cover whenever they get shot at. Um, but for now we're just going to stick with this standard formation and keep it simple. So, another thing that you can do with this mouse select window is you can look at particular objects and get a contextual order that you can give them. So in this case I'm looking at a vehicle, I can tell my guys to get into the vehicle. Get in that vehicle! We'll go! Get in. Standing by! Standing Once they're by. all in the vehicle, I'll talk about Ready. moving. So, what you can do, uh, if you want to move an AI to a specific position, is you can select a particular one, in this case I'm selecting the driver, look at where you want them to go, Two. and then middle mouse move click. Back. On the way! Ready! Really simple stuff. Uh, you can also do this on the map, so say I want him to move to a position uh, on the other side of that wall where I can't see it. Uh, what I can do is I can open up the mouse, uh, the map, not the mouse, select that same guy, and then middle mouse click on the map where I want him to Two! Go. Move 75 meters, left! And he'll go for a drive around to that position that I've told him to move to. Standing by! You'll see that they've all gone to ready now, which means that they've uh, they've completed their objective and they're waiting in that position. So, let's say we want to get our AI looking in different directions. Uh, say we're holding this position here, we want to look this way, we want to look down the road both ways and make sure nothing sneaks up on us. What you can do is you can set up your AI in various positions. So Two, this guy here, move up. Put this Three, guy here, and move put left. This guy here. Four, move right. Now at the moment, by. a couple Ready. of them are sort of looking in the right way, but that could change um, any time, and this guy's just looking the wrong way, completely. So if we want this guy here to look over in that direction, what we can do is we can select him, look in that direction and press ALT, and it'll change the move there order to a watch there order. And we can look Four. over there, Observe that position. and he'll look over that way now. We can do the same with this guy. Have him look Three, over there. Three, observe that position. Down the road. Two, watch that target. So they can actually watch specific things too. So if I can, if I tell him to watch the prowler, then he'll watch that prowler. And if I move it, then he'll actually uh, keep an eye on that. So, and as Waiting. you can see, he's keeping his eyes on that vehicle. Two, he moves around to here. This left. guy will keep track of it. Keep an eye on it. Which can be useful if you're Ready. protecting something you want to make sure that someone's always watching it. Two, disembark. So, you may have also noticed that there's a suppressing fire option in that uh, menu. 
That's useful if you know that there's enemies in a particular place but you can't see them specifically. Or if you just want to keep a particular area suppressed so that you don't have enemies pouring out of it or whatever. So to use that, use it the same way. Select this guy, in this case I'm going to select my auto rifleman because that makes sense. I'm going to look over there and I'm going to say suppressive fire. Suppressing fire! Suppressing! And all he'll do is keep shooting at that spot that you specified until you tell him to stop. And you do that once again, to regroup. Two, return to formation. And move here or tell him to hold fire. Speaking of hold fire, you can tell your guys to hold fire by selecting them and pressing the hold fire button. Two, hold fire. Apparently I'm only selecting him at the moment. Three, four, fall back. Three, four, hold fire. There we go. Okay, so when your guys are holding fire, they're actually, uh, they're not going to engage anything unless they come within a certain range or if they are engaged themselves by that thing. Uh, and this this is good if you're trying to do stealthy approaches or just conserve some ammunition, um, which will be especially useful if you're in hostile territory or you're outnumbered or anything like that. Uh, they will still engage things if they run into them. I found uh, they never they didn't used to, but that's uh, that's now something that has changed. They'll engage enemies if they run into them. They'll shoot at targets that come past, uh, except for rocket launchers. They will hold fire on rocket launchers unless you tell them to, which is a very useful feature. So you might not want them to automatically fire their rockets at everything they see. So I'd highly recommend having your AT guys hold fire and they'll actually tell you when they are going to engage. Anyway, that's it for basic unit controls, super basic stuff. Uh, make sure that you've got your guys regrouped. If they're doing weird Copy. things, so say you've got them getting get in into a thing, vehicle. and then you tell Understood. them to move over here, move and then you tell get them to get in, in again, and then you move over move here, left. they'll Wait. start to get a bit Copy confused. That. So you that. notice that guy over there, Ready. he's become stuck. What you can do is tell them to Return regroup. To formation. Solid cup. And that usually will reset what their AI is doing. It'll, it'll kick off particular behaviors and make them stop doing what they're doing. I think he actually might be stuck because I told him to target the vehicle. Oh no, there we go. He's on his he's on the move. Alright. And yeah, that's that's the biggest thing that I can say in terms of making sure that your AI are doing what you want them to do in terms of basics. We'll deal with some more advanced stuff in the next video, but I just want to get this one up super quick so that people can start playing with AI and working out what they want to do with them.